I have been stuck behind this Subaru going like 20 under the limit for miles upon miles with nowhere to pass him. Could this be Christian influence? Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. Today I'm talking about an issue that uh, has some confusion that is often attributed to Christian influence, as do so many other things in Norse mythology. And that is the question of whether dwarves are short or not. Now, it's actually pretty much meaningless as a question. Uh, it's also sort of meaningless to attribute any distortions of it to Christian influences. I don't believe there are any references to dwarves in the Bible. I think one time in Leviticus, dwarf may be used as a term uh, in the English translation, in the, in the, at least in the KGV, for a short person. Uh, but that is not the same thing as a mythological dwarf. Now, here's the real crux of the issue. You don't think like a medieval person. Neither do I. No one who can hear me thinks like a medieval person. We've all grown up in the 20th and or 21st centuries. We've all grown up in a post-scientific, very post-literate culture where things are kind of categorized, right? We have a notion of what, uh, of, of what you could call the Linnaean kind of classification of things. Linnaean classification being like genus and species, right? Like the Allen's hummingbird, a cellus forest, assassin, but the Rufus hummingbird, a cellus forest, Rufus. But, you know, while these scientific classifications may be meaningful to us, maybe a way that we approach the world, and a way that we approach even folklore and mythology now, think about the way that you get stats for things like elves and dwarves and gnomes and trolls and something like D&D &D or, or uh, World of Warcraft or something. This isn't necessarily actually um, a representation of physical reality exactly, right? The map is not the territory but also doesn't at all approximate how people thought about these things in the Middle Ages when it was much messier in general. Or even if it's not messier, they're just not as concerned with classifying and taxonomizing things the same way. Now on, uh, on uh, October 31st, on Halloween of 2019, I posted an interview of my uh, Patreon supporters with Professor Arman Jakobson from the University of Iceland, where he talked quite a bit about how nebulous the concept of troll or elf is in Old Norse. And dwarf really is kind of the same, although it's a little bit better defined. But the way it's defined is, is not quite the same as what you might expect, again, from like a D&D monster manual kind of perspective. Instead of being defined as short, right, when dwarf characters show up uh, in a saga or a myth, no one says, you know, oh, how short you are. Um, they're defined instead as great craftsmen. Of course, that's familiar to us. J.R.R. Tolkien uh, also has them be great craftsmen and, and all the fantasy stuff based on his stuff uh, also usually has them be craftsmen and smiths. Oddly enough, they often live as animals, right? You have Otter in the Saga of the Volsungs, who is an otter and a dwarf. You have Anvari in the Saga of the Volsungs, who is, an, who is a, a fish and a dwarf. You have Fafnir, who's a dwarf and a dragon. And they often live inside of rocks. Okay, are they short or not? But the word dwarf does not have anything to do with shortness originally, right? Of course, today in English, especially in, uh, I understand a uh, fairly offensive context now, uh, it can mean someone who is short. But that's not the word's uh, original meaning. If you look at its etymology, uh, certainly if you trust one of the great etymologists of Germanic languages, Anatoly Lieberman, Probably the root in dwarf is the same root as in the words dizzy, daze, and doze. It goes back to something like dwez in Proto-Germanic, probably having to do with a mental state. And this may in fact relate to the notion that you see in Old English charms that elves and dwarves cause sickness and other maladies. So um, in fact, in Old English, we have a term yedwasness, which you could translate as something like bedwarvedness, which actually means dementia. So presumably a kind of mental affectation caused by 
uh, the, the malicious working of a dwarf. Now, if the word doesn't originally mean short, now of course etymology isn't always a great guide to any of this. Where do we get the notion that dwarves are so short? I'm not necessarily sure uh, where the concept comes from in English, but in Old Norse there is an implication that they are an average short, even if they're not incredibly short. That implication comes from the phrase Dverger of Vokst, or Dverger of Vokst, dwarf in height, which when applied to human beings means they're short. Again, it doesn't seem to mean they're incredibly short, it just means that they're on the shortish side of things. Right, you know, under six feet or whatever. I don't, I don't know what normal is now, and I definitely don't know what normal was in the Old Norse period. But um, it doesn't necessarily, again, seem like that's a major characteristic. And if dwarf and elf is the same thing, and that's certainly a pet theory of mine that not everybody's going to share, and that's fine. Uh, but I've reviewed some of the evidence for that in my video about dwarves and elves, and uh, among the evidence is the fact that Snorri and the prose Edda calls some, some beings, uh, the sons of Ivaldi, both Svart, Olvar, Black, Elves, and Dvergar, dwarves, as well as the fact that the smith Volander is supposed to be the greatest craftsman of all, and that's a dwarven characteristic, but he is also explicitly called an elf in Volander Kvida. If you look at artistic representations of Volander, and of course there's no guarantee that he was always considered to be a dwarf or elf or anything like that, but it's something to go on. If you look at Frank's casket, which is from the early 700s in England, Volander, or Wayland in Old English, is depicted as being about the same size as uh, Bodvild, who is a normal human being, probably. So, I, again, my personal opinion is that they probably don't even care, right? There's probably not even a very consistent systematic idea of what a dwarf is, but they probably average shortish without being, you know, gnomes. They're not coming up to my knee, they're just short. Now, the notion that you'll sometimes see on the internet, especially uh, among the sort of people who call me a cuck on the internet, is that um, dwarves are actually quite tall in Norse mythology. I don't quite know exactly where this notion comes from either, but I think maybe part of the origin is in the poem Alvi Small. Now, in this poem, a dwarf named Alvis comes to Thor and wants to marry his daughter, um, who we know elsewhere, uh, under the name Thruther. Now, when Thor first sees him, he's, uh, he remarks about his appearance in some interesting ways. He says that he is pale around the nostrils uh, and says it looks like you spent the night with a corpse. Now, this may imply some association of dwarves with the undead. Uh, I think that actually maybe ties in nicely with some things uh, Araman said in that interview, but also with some of their names like Doin, which means dead, although that name is also used for a, an elf in Hothamon. Um, so he may be, he, it may mean that he looks like a corpse. Um, it may just mean that he looks like he lives in a rock or subterranean, uh, which is what dwarves are supposed to do. But then he also says that he thinks he has Thorsa Leaky, the likeness, the appearance of uh, Thors. Now Thors is a word, in this context it alliterates, used for a Jotun, what we often translate in English as a giant, um, the sort of greater supernatural beings that are the enemies of gods. Now there's a popular conception today that because of this unfortunate English translation of Thor's or Jotun as giant, that these are large beings, and that therefore maybe Thor is saying that Alvis the dwarf is actually quite tall. I strongly doubt this because I doubt that the poet he even had a consistent idea of what a dwarf or a Jotun or a Thurs looked like. He is just presenting them as looking bad, right? And often in mythology, just like in our movies today, if something is bad, we're going to make it ugly. And so it's going to look like maybe a corpse. And that's probably what's being implied by this whole, uh, 
this whole statement by Thor. I would leave you with a remark uh, that I also made in talking with Adamon and that I've made with students, which is that most people who speak English have a concept of what the boogeyman is, but that concept may be quite different from person to person, right? My personal boogeyman, whoever I think is under the bed or whatever, uh, probably looks different from your personal concept of the boogeyman, right? Whatever individually scares us, whatever childhood books we might have read influence the way we think of the boogeyman. But we all have a concept of the boogeyman, and it's just a scary thing that, I don't know, grabs kids or something. See, like I can't even really define it. It's just some kind of scary thing. And I think that's pretty close to how the Norse might have defined something like troll or slightly more benignly elf or dwarf. And if they were short, they were short. And if it didn't really matter, it didn't really matter. And that probably varied from region to region, from century to century, and from poem to poem. But on average, I think the evidence favors the notion that people saw them as being kind of little, if not, you know, bite size. Well, I hope this discussion has been interesting or informative for you. And uh, I hope that if you enjoy these videos, you'll check out the more than 300 other videos on this channel, which is supported by my generous Patreon supporters. And I hope you check out my books, especially The Wanderers of Them All, which will be released to the public on uh, November 20th in uh, paperback and hardcover versions. Kindle soon to follow, audiobook. Could happen, we'd have to figure out uh, how to do that with the commentary and such, but uh, it's probably doable. All right, folks. Well, for now, from beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the best. <laughs>